Hello, 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 world. It's the Weekday Roar with your host, Teresa B., presented by Amixa Media Independent and broadcasted through MU Radio. Good evening, everybody. It's Thursday, October 4th at two, 2018 at 6.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am excited you all decided to join me this evening. There are upcoming events and opportunities for you all, so stay tuned for the announcements later in the show. We're getting all caught up from Hurricane Florence, so tune in live to MethodistRadio.com or download the Radio FX app, search for Methodist University, and save it as your favorite on your mobile device. Or you can also go ahead and check us out live on Facebook at Amitza Media Independent. Please share what you thought of the song of the evening. Go ahead and send your comments. And while you're doing that, I will go ahead and introduce our VIG, very important guest of the evening. Our very important guest is Lachey. Lachey was born in Winston-Salem, hopefully I said that correctly, North Carolina, and she currently resides in Fayetteville, North Carolina. She's a stay-at-home mom of a teenage young man and a military spouse for over four years and counting. She enjoys couponing, hanging out with friends and family, and she loves to eat. <laughs> Lachey also loves to network and meet new people, so let's show our love and appreciation to Lachey. Good evening, Lachey. How are you doing tonight? I am doing so well. Thank you for having me. Well, I definitely appreciate you coming into the studio. You are our very first in-studio guest oh. for season two. So I appreciate you for coming in, and we would love to know more about you. So I know I gave a little snippet about who the Shay is, but can you go ahead and let us know a little bit more? Absolutely. Like you said, I am just a country girl from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, I do live here in Fayetteville now because I, I met my husband here, and now I'm stuck here. But we are here in Fort Bragg. My husband is military, so I am thank you to, um, to the troops. Thank you, honey. He's here also with me. Um, I am, like you said, a stay-at-home mom. My, I homeschool my son. Um, I love God. My church is Covenant Love. Um, so shout out to all my Covenant Love family. Um, I just love life. But it's, don't get me wrong, it took me a long time to get where I am now, especially over the last couple of years, just dealing with things. So who I am now, I'm, I'm happy. Wow. So I think you're going to kind of let us know about some of the things you've gone through and how you've grown through our topic, which is the family effects of miscarriages. Um, so can you go ahead and share with us why it's so important for you to wait, raise awareness on the family effects of miscarriages? Because I know there's a lot of people out in the, the listeners and the viewers, including myself, who have not experienced miscarriage, nor do I personally know, at least they haven't shared it with me, any family members that have gone through that as well. So can you please go ahead and share why it's so important for you to talk about this? Absolutely. Um, first, I do want to say that, like most people, if you've never gone through a miscarriage, it's not something that's on your brain, not something you actually look up or even mm -hmm. think about. So when I went through it, I honestly didn't know anybody who has who had lost a child through miscarriage. No one. Um, once I actually, I had put out a, a Facebook post, once I finally said something, my inbox got flooded by family members who I never knew experienced this, you know, close friends who had miscarriages. Um, but it affects people differently. And for me, it was very confusing. It was a very confusing time in my life because no one sat me down and said, it's okay that you feel this way. You're going to cry, you know, randomly. No one talked about it. It's so taboo. It's one of those things that, you know, it happens, move on, deal with it. And I wasn't in that state of mind to deal with it because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand all these new emotions that were coming over me. Um, and my husband will tell you, I will watch the snuggle commercial, the little bear. He, he jumped from um, the wash machine onto a pile of towels and I lost it. Like I was just crying, you know, and it's something as simple as that, which, which is comical now. But before it was just, a, I, I couldn't explain what was wrong with me or, you know, being angry out of nowhere, out of something, something, something as simple as like a piece of paper on the floor. And I would just totally lose it. 
you know, just be, and, and my poor husband, I would just take it out, everything out on him. And what people don't understand is it affects all your relationships, your work relationship, your friends, your uh, relationship with your spouse or your boyfriend. It, it just, it takes over because you, you don't understand what's going on because you're chemically imbalanced. Yeah. And so you, yeah. you don't, you don't get that. I was thinking about the snuggle commercial when you were saying it. Hopefully, not bring it back bad oh, memories. No. Now but, I can laugh. but when you said <laughs> if people remember it, I didn't think about it till now. I'm like, oh yes, I, and I think I can kind of understand why you probably did, just because how I remember it as a kid, I actually so I actually did. I like it the right. way it was, and it, and it came off more um, kid friendly. Right. So I could at least understand that connection that you had. Um, what are some of the personal experiences that influence you to share about pregnancy loss? Are you okay with sharing some of your personal experiences you had with it? Um, yes. Yeah, so for me, I'm a talker. Um, and I'm also, one of my love languages is affection. So I need people in my space when I'm going through things. I don't mm -hmm. want to be alone. Yeah. Um, even if I can't talk, if we're, if we're in the same room, if you're in the room with me and we don't say anything, I'm cool with that. But just don't leave me in a room by myself. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that when I went through my first miscarriage, and honestly with my first miscarriage, um, it, it was more like a period for me. And then I, I had to go on with life. So it wasn't painful. It was just an interesting transition. Because literally I got married a couple months later. Mm -hmm. um, so what really affected me is when I had the ectopic pregnancy. And that's when the baby starts growing in your tubes. Mm -hmm. And my right tube ruptured because the baby had already started growing. I was about six weeks. Um, so that I had to have emergency surgery to have it removed. So the hormones after that surgery were crazy because my body was still saying that I was pregnant but my mind is like uh no there's no baby there I knew there was no baby there but my my body was still going through the process um and I'll never forget I was in the closet getting dressed to go to work and I was standing in the closet what I always do trying to find something to wear as women I don't know why it takes us so long to pick out <laughs> we know what we have yeah, it's yeah. clothes <laughs> and I go and I go through this every day so I, but this particular day I couldn't find anything in the closet to wear nothing and I lost it I mean I was crying so hard like the you have to catch your breath like somebody died physically that's how hard I was crying and um, at the time my closet was in the room where we uh, where me and my husband shared a room so I had to walk back to our bedroom and I'm just standing there my husband's like well what's wrong with you and I was like I don't know I don't know what's wrong and I am bawling um, and I knew then something wasn't right and I couldn't explain why I felt the way I felt or what what is what was wrong. I didn't know. I couldn't I couldn't even articulate the words. I just knew that something was off. And this had been months later after my surgery. Um, I did go. And this is your second. This is my second. Um, how, but what I am missing is that I had a miscarriage earlier in the year, mm -hmm. and then my ectopic happened at the end of the same year. Mm. So it was back to back. So it was miscarriage. I got married. My husband deployed. Um, my grandfather died. Found out I was pregnant. Two days after Christmas, I had the surgery. So all that happened in 2014 in one whole year. So my mind, body hadn't processed everything. And I never grieved my grandfather. So a lot happened. My body was like, wait a minute. We haven't even processed this part. And you try to do this? So yeah, it was. Um, and I remember when I was going through most of well, all these emotions, no one would tell me the truth. Everybody kept saying it was going to be okay. No one said, you're going to feel this, and this is what it's going to feel like. You need to get through this part so that you can go ahead and get over it and start to heal. No one said that to me. That's something I had to learn on my own. So now when I talk to other women who have gone through this, oh, it's going to hurt. You just have to get through it. Just make it, make it day, take it day by day. So that's what, that's my advice to people. Please take it day by day. You're going to have to feel that feeling. So who, who were you getting this advice from previously about who failed to give you that information? Are you referring to the doctors? Yeah. Doctors. I think because they're doctors, right, right. they say like, you know, the medical terms or whatever. Right. And, I, and I get that and right. I understand. Um, but they wanted to put me on medicine and I, I, I took it for, I want to say probably about four days. 
Um, I, it, it helped me stop crying, but I didn't feel anything. I wasn't happy. I wasn't sad. I didn't feel. And that's not me. Mm. I would rather feel sad than not feel anything. Right, right. Yeah. So I immediately was like, no, can't do that. Yeah. Because I feel like a zombie, you know? Yeah. Uh, i actually been there before as far as feeling like, a like zombie. that. Yeah. Um, so this is your second miscarriage. Well, at Topic. It's a little different. So, because... Um, I did mention earlier for the listeners, you have one miscarriage, na- one son right one now. Son, so yes. you did have one successful pregnancy. Yes. But then after your son is when I had the miscarriage, you had the miscarriage mm-hmm. and then you went through that process in 2014 well, all that happened. where you had all these different <laughs> um, events just back to back all the way up until Christmas, a couple of days, all the way into December, mm-hmm. all the way into December. So, when you get into 2015, mm-hmm. how was how was everything for you at this point? What was occurring from, because I know you mentioned um, at some point your husband deployed. Yes. So when did that process, how long after the um, last traumatic event with the miscarriage occurred and then your husband left? Um, so after the, fr- the first miscarriage happened around March, April, mm-hmm. uh, beginning of, t- well, basically 2014, and we got married in May. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he deployed in July and came back in November and instantly got pregnant because you know how that goes when they deploy, you come yeah, back and get pregnant. Yeah. Um, so I instantly got pregnant when he came back, um, and then I had the ectopic, right. which was right after Christmas. So he literally had just got home, so he was still trying to process being home, and then yes. it's yeah. just like, yeah, and you then know. that get thrown at him too, right? And then now he has to go through reintegrating back while he's in, and then. His also take care of hospital. his wife right. that's in the hospital. So how was it for your son too? Because I know how, about how old was he when he was going through this process? Or do you know whether or not he um, was faced with anything during this period as well? Honestly, most of it we kind of kept him sheltered from. And since this was around Christmas and also his yeah. birthday is on New Year's. So... <laughs> My, oh. my family's awesome. They kept him busy. So he knew that mommy didn't feel well, and that was pretty much it. We didn't really discuss it and go into it. Um, not with the F topic or the miscarriage. We didn't say anything about it. It was just mommy didn't feel well. So he never really said anything. Um, but with my last one, me and him actually had the conversation because he was actually excited about being a big brother. Mm-hmm. He wanted a, a brother or a sister. Um, and it just kind of made me feel bad because I was like, I can't do this for you. You know, like I wanted I wanted yeah. you to have a sibling that was here. Um, but yeah, as far as Jeremiah, he's real level-headed about it. You know, he didn't really say he was upset or anything. So, Wow, well, kids can always be loving, especially yeah. they can um, feel, especially from a mom, how you feel and they want to be nurturing, right. even when we probably don't notice it. Now, how old was Jeremiah in 2014? 11. When- 11. 11. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. And so even during this, how was you managing, you said you had your family, mm-hmm. even with his birthday? Because that was only within a week or so, so after. It's funny. I wish I had the picture. So they, <laughs> they rolled me out the hospital and we go out to eat. We go to um, his our favorite restaurant in uh, Winston-Salem, Camp High. I still have my wristband on. I'm super pale because obviously I lost so much blood and... Um, you know, I had my IVs, little things were still mm-hmm. in my arm and stuff like that. So basically, the only thing I was able to do was go to dinner with him. And then I had to go get back in the bed because I was on bed rest for two weeks after that. Because wow. it was an emergency surgery. My um, over my uh, tube had ruptured. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's very traumatic. moving on to 2015, mm-hmm. how was you, what was going on with you then? After this occurred... Uh-huh. I know you still went through that postpartum. Yes. So what can you share with us a, a little bit more details of what was going on now that we're in 2015? If you can take us back in tw- that So year. my mindset in 2015 was when, because when all this happened, I was in Winston-Salem. So when I finally got back to Fayetteville, mm-hmm. I knew obviously I couldn't go back to work. And um, I, at the time I was working at Operation Blessing with Miss Peggy Middleton and she made it very clear I couldn't come back until the doctor said, okay. 
Um, and that was where I got my physical and my mental together. And mm -hmm. I appreciated that. At the time, I was like, but I need some money. I got to work, you know? Yeah. I got to pay bills. So that was another stress. Yes. Um, yeah. So, because I didn't want it all to fall on my husband because there were certain bills that I paid. And not only that, just being independent, I want to have my own money at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember it being hard to sit still because I'm not a sit still person. Um, and your husband is right here <laughs> nodding behind your head like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those who know me know that I can't sit still. Like, it's, it's, I just I have to be moving. But that's just how my family is. It's so funny. Um, but I remember thinking, one, I knew I needed to slow down because I couldn't move as fast as I normally did because mm -hmm. I still had stitches. Mm -hmm. um, and there was house stuff that needed to be done, like dishes need to be washed. You know, clothes need to be washed. It took me fifteen minutes just to load the washing machine because you know the bending down mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and it was so painful. Um, I will say that Jeremiah did help me out a lot, a lot, a lot. More that than 11 year old should have yeah. to do. Um, but my husband was at work, so it was, you know, not much he could do. But I did have two friends that came over and helped me um, once they got off from work, and they definitely were my prayer warriors. They prayed me through some things. And I do want to stop and say this. I did not do this by myself. If I did not have God, I, there's no way I yeah. could have made Amen. it. I want people to understand that. Please don't let this fool you. God has everything to do with this, okay? Cause so all the viewers out there, <laughs> I'm just letting you know, he was there. And I, I listen, we had conversations late at night through anger, mm. through tears. Sometimes I couldn't even say nothing. I just make noises and he understood what it was, but he got me through it. God is good. Yes. So going through this process for you, I know you have some pros and cons. Yes some some high and lows mm -hmm. through this experience and for whether it's someone who been through um, a pregnancy loss as far as a woman or even a spouse or just a family member who knows someone can you share some of the dangers of not dealing or healing from pregnancy loss what are those dangers because right now you're still going through the process right. so you at least going through it right but what if because that was almost four years ago right and then i just had one in december of last year of, of last year right. and we was going to get to that one as well mm -hmm. so the very first one was a little bit over four years yes yes it was a little yes. bit beginning of yes yeah. so we almost five years mm -hmm. so what are the dangers if anyone have experienced or know someone that experienced pregnancy loss but they haven't even dealt with the healing process yet after four or five years can you share what some of those dangers could be and even though you're going through this process now can mm -hmm. you share some of that with us now um absolutely there's two different ways you can look at it for the medical sense not going to get checked mm -hmm. just because you have a miscarriage because with some women um it just seems like a really heavy period and that may be the case that was the case for me still go to the doctor and get checked because your levels need to level out and they need to monitor that. That's very important that you do that because you can get infections and those are very real. And you can die from that. You won't even know it. Um, also with having the eptopic, if you think you have like a sharp pain in your back, it may not be your kidneys, you know, it may not be, um, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but please go get that checked out because um, had I not gone to the hospital, especially the second time, um, I already had internal bleeding, which I didn't mm -hmm. know. Had I not gone, I could have died, and I would have known. So it's, it's very important to listen to your body. That's my, that's, mm -hmm. listen, listen to your body. You know something is wrong. Don't let anyone else tell you what's wrong with your body. Be your, be your own advocate. Um, as far as the emotional part, you have to deal with it because if you don't, that can kill you from the inside out. And people don't think that, you know, oh, I'm dealing with it, or I don't have anybody to talk to or anything like that, find somebody to talk to, even just for five minutes, you know, for the day, call a random person, I don't care who you need to talk to, talk to somebody about it, because it really turn, it turns to stress, stress can turn to cancer. Oh, yeah. It's real. Yeah. It's very real. Um, depression is very real, um, yeah. and especially in our African-American community, no one, well, not no one, but the way people are killing themselves nowadays, please get help. Yeah, and talk it's not to common to talk about depression. And it's not. Um, in most cultures. So, yeah, so now you're afraid. And sometimes you don't even know the signs of what right. it is because we don't talk about it. 
And then you mentioned about getting checked out. Mm -hmm. So are you saying right after you experience the heavy bleeding, get checked out? Or are you saying after you deal with the actual miscarriage, you still go back in? If you know for sure that you have had a miscarriage, and if you don't know, please go to the doctor. Um, I didn't know that I was, ha well, I didn't know I was having a miscarriage because I knew I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So um, I immediately went to the doctor. That was my next step because mm -hmm. it was just a lot of blood. And I was like, this is not normal. Um, and I'm glad I did because they were able to monitor it and make sure that my hormone, hormone levels went down. And they also informed me about what I can and can't do while I'm still going through yeah. the process. Yeah. And see, I would have known that, like, you can't take baths. So I wouldn't, I would because, you know, when you go through that, you want to sit down. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you can't. Wow. Say, and that's stuff I would have known. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, um, I guess during the checkup, they gave you that. Right. But they didn't give you what you'll be potentially going through. Once. After. Yeah. Okay. No. Wow. So this is very good to know. And so how long was it your recovery from the one in 2014? How long did you recover before your next one? How, how long did it take you to, I guess, get back to work? Because I know you said you had to wait. How long was it until you was able to get back to work? Uh, with my miscarriage, I only missed like three days of work. It wasn't, because it literally happened on a weekend, so I mm -hmm. came back on a Wednesday. Okay, um, so share how was that for you, coming back to work within, you say, three days? It's all yeah, the day? Well, because it happened on, uh, it was a weekend, because it was a, like a, he was, and he was out of town, actually, when it happened. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember calling my doctor's office, and it was after hours, and no one, I wouldn't be able to be seen until Monday. But I was, by that time, I had already started having the miscarriage. Mm -hmm. But they confirmed it for me on Monday. Um, so I was basically out for two days. Um, but even, but the physical part, it really was just like being on your menstrual cycle for me. So you didn't, so it there was, was no extra. Mm, okay. Yeah. But how was it for you even after that? When you went back to work, did things seem normal to you? Or how was your experience going right back into work? I was emotional. Um, I didn't... Uh, mm, I didn't cry as much. Mm -hmm. But I was emotional. But I was more thankful that it happened early on. Because people have miscarriages and when, they're, when they're like 12, 16 weeks. I was only six weeks. So it really was just like a menstrual cycle. So it wasn't anything to see, mm. I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, so for me, I kind of went with it. Okay. So unfortunately, <laughs> that wasn't your last experience. Right. Uh, with having a miscarriage. Can you share with us how the next experience when did that occur and what happened with you with that experience yes um so the next one that happened with, with the F topic was towards the end of uh, December 2014 and at the time both me and my husband were both excited about me being pregnant not like 2014 saying, are, you about, are you talking about 2014 the one that just happened the one that just happened. okay so the one yeah. in December um, that one was interesting. 2017. 17, yes. Okay, so now we're on 17. You were on 17. Okay. So that one was interesting because I didn't believe that I was pregnant. This one over here was just like, you're pregnant. Don't do not do this to me right now, okay? Because at the time, I was on my team get skinny, you know, losing yeah. weight, dropping a few pounds. And I was just like, I feel weird, very weird. And I noticed little things. And I was just like, why is he so annoying today? Like, he was just. And it wasn't anything that he was doing any extra, but he was just that particular day, mm -hmm. he was just so annoying. So I was just like, let me just take a pregnancy test. So one turned into two, two turned into three, and then three turned into six for all of them to say that I was pregnant. However, I didn't say anything to him because I didn't want him to get excited and then it'd be over again. That was my thought process because yeah. we've gone through this before twice and I didn't want him to get to get his hopes up and then it would come like crashing down. So literally the only person I told was my mom um, and my best friend, Shalika. But I was still so nervous to say something to him. But I did make a doctor's appointment. Um, I called and said, well, I, you know, my period is about two weeks late, but it could just be that it's, you know, off or whatever. Um, and I had an appointment for that Wednesday. Um, but something happened 
he got mad at me or something. I just blurted out, that's because I'm pregnant. <laughs> and that's not how I wanted to tell him. Like, I had this whole special occasion planned for us, but it was just, so he's just like, are you serious? I was like, yes, go look at all those pregnancy tests. And he was like, what? I was like, I'm pregnant. So he was just, you know, he was excited. But I was just like, please don't tell anybody because, one, I'm too early. And if mm -hmm. anything is to happen, I don't want to have, I don't want people to say, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I don't want to have to go through that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I had told him on a Thursday, Sunday morning, um, I had gotten up to get ready to go to church. And it was a little earlier than I normally get up, but I was hungry. Um, and it was about 8 o'clock. And I remember saying, okay, something feels weird. It was just all this pain, like, on my left mm -hmm. side. And I had felt it the night before, but I thought maybe it's the way that I'm sleeping. So I was just like, well, let me just get up. And I was like, mm, no, this, this don't feel right. So let me pack a bag and have my husband take me to the hospital just to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. At this point, we know I'm pregnant. So we'll, we'll see. And I even had, I had a doctor's appointment that following week, but I knew something wasn't right. So um, a lot of pain. We get to the hospital, um, Womack, and as soon as we pull up, the pain goes away. We walk in, and I'm explaining to the guy what I'm feeling, and I immediately I, I bust out crying because I knew what it was. Mm. Um, same type same of Same type of feeling, and, and it was just on one side. So I mm. knew exactly what it was. Um, the staff was so amazing. They, you know, um, got me to the back, had me do ultrasounds, and um, and they rolled me into surgery. I woke up, um, wasn't aware of what was really going on yet. Still, uh, I remember getting home and just being so drowsy and just like this is happening again, but I was more prepared mm -hmm. because of the last time. Um, and this time my tube didn't rupture. However, I had internal bleeding. So it was one of those things where had I not gone to the mm -hmm. hospital, I could have died. So I was like, well, thank you, Lord, because I, you know, I, I didn't know that. So that gave me another outlook on life. Like I could be dead. So maybe there's a purpose on my life. And just even going through all this I can finally say to someone or a woman that's gone through this it's going to be okay it really is you're going to feel this you're going to go through these things and all these emotions you're going to go through and none of it's going to make any sense but it's okay you're normal you're not going crazy Whew. I don't know I'm trying to really listen to what you're saying but at the same time I'm kind of have a little chill bumps <laughs> because I've, I've heard some of what you said, of course, mm -hmm. um, before, but it's like, this is my first time hearing it again. And I think it's a combination of that. And I'm on the, um, MU radio, radio FX app under the MU radio. Mm -hmm. And there is a comment here from Donnie, Donnie, IE with the Donny K and she wanted to know if you had a son mm -hmm. already would you do you know why these things happen to you after and you know what that's the funny thing that people um let me just say this oh I asked doctors why is this happening um even after I had my first ectopic one and they removed my right tube so when I had that removed, they did another test on my left tooth to make mm -hmm. sure that it wasn't blockage or anything. Mm -hmm. And I looked up on the ultrasound on the screen and the guy said, oh, you light up like a Christmas tree. Everything is fine. There's no blockage. So there should be no reason why you can't get pregnant. Um, even with me only having one tube at the time, um, my doctor made it very clear. She was like, it's not a 50-50 chance that you're going to get pregnant. It's still a high chance, like 80, 90% chance that you still get pregnant. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just these things happen sometimes. No one has given me a definite answer as to why this happens or why it's happened to me twice or even just having the miscarriage. Um, so I, I really don't have the answer to that. So no one's actually said, well, this is why this has happened. Well, thank you, Donnie. Hopefully that at least answers your question. question. I was trying to swipe and, and look at the same time <laughs> and also listen to what she had to say. But before we get to the break, I wanted to touch a little bit more too on the effects it had on your family as well when we talk about um, pregnancy loss. And for those of you that was listening 
or is listening and was watching, um, Lachey's husband is here. And we want to bring him in before the break and just get some insights from him on what his experience was as well. Because sometimes we tend to think just because a woman physically dealt with it, um, and of course, mentally and emotionally, we tend to forget about the other participant in um, trying to conceive. So um, can you go ahead and share with us Share with us your name and any other, anything else you would like to share. And just give us a little bit of insight of what your experience was because um, not just the women want to hear it, but the men want to hear it as well and have some insights on it from, from you. Because this is how many miscarriages? We're talking about three within four, a little bit over four years. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and share um, a little bit about yourself and what was your experience? Hello everyone, um, you can call me Fox. Um, so, back in 2014, uh, we had a miscarriage, like she said. Mm -hmm. really, at the time, it didn't bother me uh, so much because uh, it, w it happened so fast. Um, and at the end of 2014, in December, she had her first uh, uh, autopsy pregnancy, uh, which bothered me to a, a certain extent, but being I guess you can say the male, the, the strong figure in the mm -hmm. household. Um, it was a lot going on, trying to be strong for my wife, for her having a miscarriage and her grandfather passing literally mm -hmm. all in the same week. Uh, and trying to make sure my son is, uh, I guess you can say, shel sheltered a little right, bit right. Uh, from the situation. So it didn't hit me as hard. Um, the last one in 2017 really hit me hard. Um, it almost changed, uh, I guess you could say my perspective, uh, one, because like, you know, they say, uh, what is it called? Um, pregnancy symptoms for males, mm -hmm. it's real. Yeah. Like, I had, um, <laughs> uh, literally, I remember we had our niece one time in, at Target and I'm in the car crying for no apparent reason. And I was like, this is weird, like, get it together, you know, because one, I am military, so I'm like, why am I crying? This is not normal. Uh, I can probably cry probably like 10 times in my whole life. Uh, and then going to Target and try to buy everything in, the, in Target for my little niece. Uh, so, obviously, the wife didn't let that happen. Um, so, it, it literally changed my perspective on things because um, it definitely made it a whole lot more real uh, for me. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a little difficult just trying to be strong, trying to be there for her. Um, so, for my part, it's just it's a little different, I guess you mm -hmm. could say, because physically there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with me, uh, but mentally yeah. trying to get around that and continue going on with work, it was definitely challenging. Um, I think one of the things uh, that definitely helped me was praying um, and then talking with the older guys in the church. So I tell anybody, if you ever have any issues, definitely seek help. Uh, if you can't find anybody, feel free to hit me up on Facebook. I am more than willing to conversate with you. Um, but yeah, it was, wow. it was definitely different and it was definitely an experience. Uh, yeah. Wow. And let's make sure we keep this in mind. It's been less than a year yes. since this last um, unfortunate event. For you both, how is it from December to October? It's been a little bit over nine months. How has um, it been? Has it still been something that's been an ongoing issue for you? More so for you right now, Fox. Um, yes, so it's kind of, you have a lot of um, emotions that's going through. You got hostility, happiness, sadness, mm -hmm. depression, just pretty much a whole lot of emotions. And most mm -hmm. males that I know don't have that many emotions all at once. Um, for me, I know me, I have either I'm happy or I'm sad. It's never both. Um, you know, so or either I'm confused or it's, it's never a whole lot of emotions. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And then, so, like, part of me was angry at her uh, because of this. Part of me was angry at God. Part of me was angry at myself mm-hmm. that I do something wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then just trying to come to a re- realization that uh, it's nothing we did. It, it's something that we can't predict, something we can't help. Um, so just trying to get to get around that and then dealing with my wife. If anybody actually knows my wife, they know how extra she can be sometimes. So won't, won't, don't want to sit down after trying to get surgery, trying to go coupon at Target in a wheelchair. Mm, she did say she loved couponing. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm telling them all. Yeah, I need them to know my struggle. Uh, <laughs> so it's 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 difficult a little bit, but you know we stay strong, you know, and we prayed our way through it. So we're still rocking. Cause you, like you say, you experienced it, the loss of um, having a baby, but then you still have to protect her. Yes. You still have to kind of hold it in mm-hmm. and not show her. So then you have to find somewhere else. To express these like um, how how was that was have you both done that together like what have you done together to go through that healing process from late night conversations three o'clock in the morning still look like oh well i had this to talk about. let's talk about this and just pretty much just talking it out <laughs> um that was that that's pretty much i think most of all we've done babe. open communication yeah uh but for me, for my stress reliever, you know, because I am military, I'm going to the range. So I'm going to go shoot, <laughs> and I shot a lot. <laughs> Just put it like that. So praying and shooting. We are range, not those people. Safety, safety first. We are range, not those safety people. First, but <laughs> just to let everybody know, so... <laughs> Well, he did say in front of, he's in the military, too. So, so he's not just going all around. Yeah, You're I'm, going to a range. <laughs> yes. Certified legal range for all of you. Yeah. Um, and Donnie also says thank you for sharing, Fox, oh, as no well. Problem. Thank you again, and Donnie, for listening and bringing in your input. We're going to take a quick break because I know that it was a little bit probably intense and emotional. <laughs> so we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back on the Weekday Roar. Oh, hey, y'all. Amitsa Media Independent, a trusted and accessible online platform that strives to change trauma to testimony by revealing significant matters related to military women in order to improve social influence. Our books, blogs, videos, and other various products are created to inspire women while aiming to develop healthier relationships. Visit us at www.amitsamedia.com. Amitsa, the brave girl, guiding your pathway to her strength, her wisdom, her love, her value. We're back on the weekday roar with your host, Teresa B. And it is now time to go ahead and um, give the announcements. But make sure you are listening live to MethodistRadio.com or the Radio FX app, or you can also go ahead and get on Facebook Live. You know, we started that this season. Um, If you want to just check us out in the studio as well. And thank you again for the listeners that's also on the Radio FX app. Our announcements. So anyone here that's in Fayetteville, North Carolina, go ahead and join me in supporting the American Heart Association on Saturday, October 13th, 2018 at 9 a.m. at Festival Park. We'll be walking our hearts out. We're not just walking, we're heart walking. Our participation in the heart walk promotes fun ways to be physically active and make healthier choices every day. Imagine the impact if we reduce death and disability from cardiovascular diseases and stroke by 20%. Please help me reach this life-saving goal by joining me if you're in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area, and all of you can also donate. Together, we can make happier and healthier, longer lives possible for everyone. And you can check out the link, or I can email it to you on our Facebook page or info at amitsamedia.com. Thank you in advance for your support. And do not forget to connect with us. Let's keep in touch on our social media pages 
So please like, comment, and share these pages on your page and to your friends as well. We have Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn as well. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to our website at amitsamedia.com to be the first to know all of our upcoming events, blogs, and products through weekly newsletters. There are also opportunities to receive freebies, such as gift cards and merchandise, so let's stay in touch. And if you would like to be a VIG, very important guest on Amitsa Media Radio, please check us out on our Amitsa Media Facebook page or email us once again at info at amitsamedia.com to receive an interest form and other awesome information. And all replay shows will be available on our website and our Facebook page, and you can also check it out on MethodistRadio.com. And before we go into a little bit more of our announcements, I wanted to go ahead and let our VIG just go ahead and share one of the announcements that she have. Um, she probably have a few more, but we're going to go ahead and share one of the events that she has coming up too for those of you that are in the Fort Bragg, Fayetteville, Hope Mills area and any other surrounding area. So go ahead, Lachey, and share your event. Absolutely. Um, so I started a support group. It's called Angel Mommies NC. Um, we've had several meetings uh, thus far, but October is Pregnancy Loss Awareness Month. So in this month, I am uh, hosting a baby shower. Um, it's actually going to be October the 27th, which is a Saturday between 11 and 2. Um, the address is 3342 Legion Road in Hope Mills, North Carolina. Um, I will post the address for you. Um, but this is a baby shower we never had. Um, so for me, the only thing that uh, proved that I was even pregnant was the pregnancy, the positive pregnancy test. So I got to, I missed out on um, the gender reveal or just having this ex sharing this experience with my family, having the baby shower. So I know there are other women, other parents who miss out on this opportunity as well. So I felt the need that we need to have that baby shower that we've never had. Um, so we're gonna have, you know, play baby shower games, have food and have fun. Um, we do ask that you do bring a gift. All the gifts that are gonna be gifted will be donated to parents who are in need, especially with Hurricane Florence um, that came through here. I know there are a lot of parents who um, need diapers, need wipes, need bottles, formula, anything you think that a baby would need or anything that you wanted for your baby shower. Um, we ask that you do bring that. Uh, if you want to reach out to me or want to know how that you can help, even if you don't want to come, but you want to give something or even just sponsor because everything comes out of my pocket and my husband, he's the finance manager, which he's not happy about appointing him that title. But everything like the food and the gifts and anything like that comes out of my pocket and um, we're not rich by any means, but um, my email address is Lachey, and it's L-A-S-H-A-Y at angelmommiesnc.com, and mommies is spelled M-O-M-M-I-E-S, um, so just send me an email if you would like to reach out to me and find out what you can do to help, and if you just want to attend or if you know someone, just send them my way. Awesome, and I will also be posting it on the Meets the Media page as well for those of you that wasn't able to catch all of that information. So you'll get that and you'll also be able to go directly to Lachey's page as well if you want any other upcoming events from Lachey. And also don't forget that you can get your copy of Bravely Miseducated, How I Lost My Voice. And you can also, for the queens, make sure you pick up your copy of When Life Gets Tough, Adjust Your Crown, and Remain Positive, the inspirational, easy-to-use journal. So go ahead and check that out as well on AmitsaMedia.com. And in a later show, we'll touch a little bit more about those products, but more information is on the website as well. And Lachey is going to give us a little bit more information with some of what she has going on here at Angel Mommy's ENC. But right before she does that, and because Fox is here, <laughs> we want to go ahead and do a quick little speed game before she gives us that. Oh. And that's this or that or just not for me. We just want to know a little bit more information about each individual and just check each other out. But in this case, I wanted to switch it up. I wanted um, Fox first to 
give me the response of what Lachey may have for this or that or just not for her. And then Lachey would do the same for this or that or just not for him. So, Fox, I'm going to have you go first. I know this is a surprise <laughs> for you. But, but it's basic stuff. So, like, right now, it's just food and drink. And I'm going to oh. give you um, two different things. And you tell me if it's this or that, which one is it, or it's just not for her. Okay? You ready? Okay. Uh, ready. So, it's food or drink. And we're going to hit breakfast first. Breakfast or no breakfast? No breakfast. Eggs or pancakes? Pancakes. Pork bacon or turkey bacon? Neither. Scramble or over easy eggs? N neither. White or wheat bread? White bread. Okay, so Lachey kind of looking. I did miss one. Yes, you did. Bacon, pork bacon. So is so. In, in our household, it's called bacon. <laughs> Real bacon. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. <laughs> Ain't no such thing as turkey bacon. Ain't, ain't no such thing. <laughs> yeah, just pork. Just pork. Canadian bacon, none of that. It's just bacon. Because she looked at Real you bacon. like, what? Yeah. So, yeah. How, so how did he do? I didn't have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did he do? What you think? Um, I really don't eat breakfast because okay. I, 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 I'm not still long enough to yeah. stop and eat breakfast. Or um, up. or no, I'm up. I'm just not. <laughs> I, I eat brunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I don't eat eggs, so pancakes was correct. I eat pork bacon. I don't know why that was <laughs> difficult. She said bacon. I was like, oh, he got this. Neither. Neither. Who <laughs> 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 is this? I, I I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just nice. threw him off. Just I threw him off. He's going too fast. It's that's a what it was. Oh, that's why? Okay. Yeah. She called it, I called it. You didn't catch it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, that's I what, eat that's bacon. That's that bacon. Thing, that's no. That's 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 yeah. Bacon, bacon. Oh, that's funny. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see how well the shake can do. I think I won now. This or that, <laughs> or just not for him. So we're going to do a different one. Okay. So this one, let's see. We're going to do for him. Hmm. You might help. You might be able to do well on this one. We're going to go ahead and do sports. Okay. This or that, or just not for him. Okay. Aerobic exercise or cardio. Neither. Pumping iron or pumping gas? Uh, iron. Pumping Running iron. or walking? Running. Baseball or football? Football. Fishing or kayaking? Neither. Skydiving or bungee jumping? <laughs> oh, neither. <laughs> Bowling or putt-putt? Bowling. Video games or board games? Video games. Okay, how did she do? She did okay. Uh, Just okay? Yeah, so I think she missed three. What? Three? Yeah, I missed three? Yeah. So, so the skydiving and bungee jumping. Which oh, say? which one? Both. Oh. Yeah, so oh. I do both of those. I've already been there. I jumped out of planes already. And that's what I'm saying. I didn't <laughs> so pay to go do it. Yeah, I'm not paying. I can do that for free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bungee jumping, uh, yes, I will, but like. It's not gonna be like a weekend thing. Every yeah, weekend. right. <laughs> <laughs> now skydiving, I do every weekend. Now, uh, let's see. I can't think of the other ones. What was it? Aerobic exercise or cardio, pumping iron or pumping gas, running mm, or neither. walking, baseball or football. Like going to the gym. You don't I, like? I really don't like going to. I, I go to the gym because I have to, not because I want to. Okay. Um, and then what was it? Running and or walking. Neither. Really. Okay. But once again, that was another. Well, did she get football right? Yeah, Baseball, of football. Okay, yeah, so of so because because you because you. Okay, all so all right, and video games or board games? Video games. Are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. see, yeah. Lachey giving you the look. That was good. <laughs> look. Well, I like to kind of throw a little curveball mm -hmm. in it and just. Yeah, that was that know. was that was a curveball. That was a fastball. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though. Yeah, well, mine were easy, way easier than hers were. Well, what happened with the bacon? Right. Like, I, I just, it was, it was so fast. Like, I was like, oh, I, I caught it, but it was just, it was too hot. <laughs> you know I'm short. So. I like that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again for the speed game. And um, it was just interesting to for you to get to know a little bit more of what you probably didn't know. And for us to know as well. So mm -hmm. I'm sure our listeners enjoyed it too. 
But we're going to go ahead before we end it, and we're going to allow Lachey to go ahead and share with us Angel Mommy's NC. Yes. Please tell us how you started, how you came about with it, and what did your family think of this idea? Um, God had told me when I was in the hospital, the, uh, when I had my first ectopic uh, in the December 2014 that I needed to do this. And I told him no. And I've been running from it, didn't want to deal with it, because I didn't want to deal with the emotions. Um, and I was just like, no, I'm not, I don't want to do it, because why, who, who am I to do something like this? And I, I'm not a doctor. Um, you know, I don't have any, I don't have a PhD. I don't have any kind of counseling behind my name. I didn't want to do it. It was just a no, no God. And um, after I had this last one in December, um, I really didn't want to do it because I was still in pain. Like, I, I was going through the process of healing. I was still crying. And I was like, I don't understand why you need me to do this. Why can't you call somebody else to do this? I'll just, you know, work behind them. And I was cool with that position. Um, but it wasn't until my church had a women's conference. And we were in the conference. And we were in our breakout session. And Holy Spirit was coming in and kind of ministering to everybody in their own little way. And he told me what I needed to do. And it was so clear, and I was just like, I was still saying no. And then in, in that instant, there was a lady who had lost her son. He was a year old, though. Um, I felt her pain. I physically knew what she, that, that weeping, um, it's a different kind of um, loss when you lose your mother, when you lose a spouse, when you lose a sibling, when you lose your blood. It it hurts you to your soul and I felt that so that I, I knew that I then that I needed to do something for people like her and myself because no one there's no outlet here in Fayetteville yeah. um, when I was going through it, I was googling searching just trying to find some kind of support I need to talk to somebody my husband didn't know what was going on with my uterus he doesn't have a uterus um, he didn't understand why I was crying so when God told me I needed to do this I said okay um, I remember going home that night and telling him at 10 o'clock at night, well, God told me that I needed to start this group. I didn't have a name. I knew what I needed to do. But in my head, the way my husband is set up, I was prepared more to defend my cause, what God said, and I wasn't ready for what I got from him. He was like all in. He was just like, why not you? And I'm like, who is this? Who is this man that is before thee? Like this is not my husband. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't prepared for that. I was more prepared to say, "Well, God told me I need to do this." And once my husband said, "Baby, whatever you need, I got you," and then it went from me telling my mom and my stepdad, who just happened to be listening, was ministering to me too, and I was wow. just like, "And now I'm crying again." And I'm like blown away that I had more support than I thought because I was honestly was more prepared to do this. This is what God said. This is what I need to do. Not people going, you know, pouring into me and being like, you got this. You can do this, you know. Um, so that's how it started. I had a place to have my first meeting before I even had a name. Um, the minister mm -hmm. over this, the support group is Pastor Pam, uh, Pastor Pam Morrison. Um, and she was just like, whenever you find a name, let me know when your first meeting is. You can have it at my church. And I was just like, and that put a lot of pressure on me because I was just like, nah, I really got to think of a name. Um, I had an image, but not a name yet. God was like, you got this. And I'm telling you, it's been all God. The things that I've been able to get done, the people that I've encountered, people I don't even know have helped me tremendously. Um, and it didn't even cost me a lot. Just saying, okay, God. And literally the doors just opened. And it is Angel Mommies. Yes. NC.com. Right. Um, and, and the way mommies is spelled is spelled that way because when my mom signed all of our birthday cards, that's how she wrote her name. M O M M I E S. Yes. M O M M I E S. Yes. Angel Mommies N C. Yes. Any last words, Lachey, before we go ahead and conclude the show and make sure I post this online for everyone to get the information? Do you have any last words? Um, just know that when you go through this process, even if you've never gone through it before, you know, I um, mean, you know, someone that's gone through it, just be gentle, um, be mindful of what you say, even though you may not intentionally mean to say, 
don't this is one thing don't ever say you can try again you don't know that child is the one that i wanted you know granted yes maybe i can try again but for my case i can't because i don't have tubes um but that hurts more than anything and it's something as simple as that just don't say it you know just be there sometimes there's no words you can say all i have is tears just sit with me you know that kind of thing just be gentle um if you've gone through it or if you're going through it be gentle with yourself allow yourself to heal don't rush it um you have to feel all those emotions you're going to have to go through it wow wow angel mommies nc please check her out i'm going to post it thank you again listeners we are a little bit over our time <laughs> But we will post this, so please check her out. And if you are in the area, Saturday, October 27th, 11 a.m., please go ahead and attend 3342 Legion Road, Hope Mills, North Carolina. Thank you again, listeners. Thank you, Fox. Thank you, Lachey. Thank you for having us. No problem. And, of course, thank you, God, for this opportunity for my breath for being alive. I appreciate it. My daughter, of course, loved me unconditionally, probably get tired of me, but <laughs> thank you as well. And you know, Methodist University Mass Communication Radio Department, thank you as well for this opportunity. And of course, again, I said about three, four times, listeners, thank you from the Radio FX app, Facebook, when you get to it and check the recording, thank you as well. And um, also MethodistRadio.com for those of you that are on there as well. And with the chat, I have not forgotten about you. I'll go ahead and try to pull it up soon after this evening and you will get the next show. But I'm also going to tag this so you can go ahead and follow Angel Mommies NC as well. So thank you again for listening to the Weekday Roar and have a good evening. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't get to hear what people were saying.